YouTube, this is your certified life and relationship coach, Coach Court. In today's video, we're going to be talking about why I feel rebound relationships will not work. They will fail. And not only I, there is statistics to back it up. 90% of rebound relationships will not work out. And why don't they work out? It's because those people that are in their rebound relationship, they have not processed their feelings. They have not processed their emotions from the previous relationship. So it gives their relationship 10 to 20% of a chance. But I'm going to, I'm going to, I digress. I'm going to, um, what's up, Rania? I'm going to, um, you know, get to that a little bit later. You know, but if you guys are part of the membership program, please make sure that you uh, make sure that you fulfill your membership uh, twenty percent, your twenty minutes session for with me for the month. Sorry, I'm like a little bit I'm all over the place, but I've been drinking coffee a little a little too late. My bad. If you guys are part of the membership program, make sure that you fulfill your session with me. Reach out to me. Get with me on uh, email. I appreciate you guys, and we're going to dig deep into this this um, topic. I, I don't like when, e when uh, text messages come through when I'm on my sessions because it really kind of frazzles me. I need to learn how to mute that. All right, so if you guys are watching me for the first time, go on a coaching session with me, reach out to me on my website at www.fruitforseedswithzedian.com. Here's my email. I put that up on the screen for you guys. I am offering, I thought about this tonight because COVID is about to, oh, I shouldn't have said it, but I said it. It's about to kick back into play. I want to make sure that you guys are able to afford a session with me. And I am actually offering $50 half hour sessions with you guys. If you guys are interested in that, um, here is my email. Reach out to me. That is you know, 30, 30% off my normal rate. But anyway, I want to make sure that you guys get the support that you need during this time because I know people are really struggling. Um, people are getting laid off. People are getting um, a little frustrated because they have to sit at home and they can't go to counseling offices. They can't go to therapy offices. And I, so I understand. I totally understand. I appreciate you guys for always supporting me. And this is just one way that I'm going to be, you know, showing that support for you guys and an appreciation. So thank you. All right. So I have talked about this a lot. On my channel, if you guys aren't familiar, oh, there it is. Uh, seagull feather. If you guys aren't familiar with that's going with my coaching sessions with my channel um i really try to empathize with you guys because i I've, I've been there where you guys are at right now i understand that people struggle with breakups with relationships and uh, especially when it comes to a certain type of attachment style if you guys are struggling with somebody who is more avoidant than you if you're an anxious attacher i appreciate you but let's do some housekeeping here if you're just coming in here and you haven't liked the feed if you haven't shared the feed that is one way that you can give back to me for you know consistently getting on these live sessions with you guys and making sure that you know i can you know facilitate because that's what it is we're a community i can facilitate this community that we have right now. And I understand, like, I need to make sure that these, these text messages disappear. Facilitate these sessions. Hey, Paris, what's up? Appreciate you being here. All right, so when we want to talk about rebound relationships and how they rarely work, I know that most people, when they reach out to me, they're just, they're in shambles because they don't understand how a person could leave them 
and get into another relationship right away. And they're wondering why is it that this person can move on so quickly from me when I can't get over them? I am attached to them. I am struggling being able to stop thinking about them, but they can move on so quickly. And they're wondering if I ever mattered. And I, I, I'm going to reassure you that you didn't matter. You mattered to them. And usually what happens is when a person is having a hard time getting over you, they try to bury those feelings. Or if they know, if they anticipate that they'll have a hard time getting over you, they try to bury themselves in another person and to uh, kind of distract themselves for from what they felt for you. So understand that if they get into a rebound relationship, it's probably a good thing. It's probably because you meant a lot to them and they need to bury themselves in, um, what do they call it? Escapism and uh, distractions because they do not want to think about you. And the more that they do, the more that they have to like find these distractions to get over you, you know? And I understand for those people who are anxious attachers, we can't, we can't do that. You know, it's not that simple for us to just quickly get over somebody to quickly get into a relationship with somebody else, because that person, when we get into a situation ship with them, they'll quickly realize that this person isn't fully present. They're not all the way here. They are most likely not over their ex. Now, when I was going through my divorce, it didn't take very long for, you know, as an anxious, preoccupied person in recovery, it didn't take very long for the person, the people that I was talking to or dating to realize that I wasn't, you know, completely over my ex. They got that. They picked up on it. They were like, yeah, this, this person isn't healed yet. And that's the problem. When people don't take the, the, the time to heal, which for every year that you're in a serious relationship, it's going to take at least two to three months to heal from that relationship. I don't care who you are. I don't care what you do. This is just kind of the standard. If you guys are just coming in here, click like on the feed, share the feed. Nicole, I appreciate you. Namaste. Thank you for supporting me. All the more reason not to panic and to reach out. You guys have to understand that if they haven't um, taken the time to heal, to get over you, they're most likely just distracting themselves with somebody else. It hurts your ego. I get it. It bruises you. You're like, wow, you know, after everything that we've been through, this person is easily able to move on and to find somebody else. And to get intimate with somebody else. But guess what? It's not exactly what you think. Now, that person may be taking up time, maybe taking up space. But because most rebound relationships end within the first three to six months. Now, this is a fact. You can you can you can quote me on this one. You can you can Google me on this one. I've experienced it. So. And, I, you know, you guys know that I'm all about, I don't just go off a of book and statistics. I go off of experience also. You know, your truth equals experience plus wisdom, you know. So wisdom plus ex experience equals your truth. And I've experienced this multiple times. I've experienced it myself where I felt like I look back. And I'm like, wow, I, I really thought I was over my ex. And. Hindsight, no, I wasn't. I was just, I was just killing time. I was uh, delusional thinking that I was over my ex. And it happens with everybody. Um, I don't care who you are. I don't care what attachment style you have. You're going to struggle to move on to the next person if you haven't healed what you needed to heal from the previous relationship because here's what happened 
we'll think like, oh, yeah, we're healed. And we'll throw all that garbage into a big old garbage bag, throw it over our shoulder and carry it into the next relationship and say, hey, here's everything that I have for you. This is everything that's happened to me. But don't worry, I'm healed. When you're healed, that garbage no longer gets carried into the next relationship. So this is what you guys need to understand. All right. Get into the comments now. I'm good, Parrish. Thank you for asking. Uh, hey, I was able to make it. To... I don't want to put you on the screen. Sorry about that. I was able to make it this time again. Let's get at it. Let's go. My ex is still in a relationship with the guy she got with me two weeks after breakup with me. It's been a year and three months. That's still normal. So listen, if you have followed me long enough, if you guys have, you know, you know, watched a lot of my videos, I talk a lot about that in my rebound relationship videos. And I talk about how rebound relationships from, from, can last up to two years before it, it, it turns <clears throat> toxic. They usually turn toxic at the two year mark where they feel that person is not right for them. They start bickering and arguing about a lot of different things. Uh, or they may feel like that person is just not for them. They, the person may struggle with drugs and alcohol issues. They may be abusive. They may be poor communicators. They may be dismissive avoidant. And they didn't see it all the way up into the two-year mark. So, yeah. It's still a possibility. My ex-husband is... Sorry, my ex-husband of 17 years just married his mistress. Mm. Wait, so how long did you guys, how long have you guys broken up, Angela? How long were you guys just um, separated from each other? And here's the, and that's another thing. <laughs> here's another thing, uh, Angela. Here's the stati statistic for you. You know, 70, we have been divorced for four years. 70 to 80% of divorces is initiated by the woman. Now, I don't mean to put you on the spot, but 20 to 30% of men that that is that is divorce the woman that they were married to is usually because there were some major issues in a relationship. Or that person might have been a cluster B personality person, you know, or they might have been a, a antisocial personality or a narcissist or a psychopath or a sociopath. Did you uh, pick up on any of those those symptoms with him? Since you're commenting, I'm going to put you on the spot. Damn mess, though. He fouled. Yeah, narc. There you go. There you go. I am. Um, it kind of scares me how accurate I am sometimes. But once you study human behavior and you understand how a lot of people operate, then it's like it's literally like a layup. Like mm, I can see when I used to coach football and, you know, it's 11 on 11. All right. It's 11 on 11. And. Once you study the different coverages, you know, if you guys know football, there's, there's different coverages that they that people run. And when a person is out of place or when a person is showing different behaviors than what's normal, you kind of figure it out. You're like, mm, they look like they might be in a cover three man because this person is doing this when they, they're really supposed to be doing this. So you get it like you understand it. And it's the same way with human behavior. When a person is doing certain certain behaviors and they're doing things that isn't quite normal is out of the ordinary. Then you're like, all right, they have to be running this type of defense in order for them to even be on the field right now. Like they have to be running something that I already know. So the red flags now, he was good. He was good at it. See, seriously, I see now that I am away far from it because love blinds people. I talk about that on my Instagram. Now, I actually um, <clears throat> posted something about that. 
on my Instagram instantly <laughs> recently. Um, I am Coach Court. If you guys aren't following me on uh, on uh, Instagram, I talk about that how um sorry, I'm trying to catch up there. You get it, you pick up on it. You know, if a person is acting a certain way, if a person is using the word love to manipulate you to get you to do something for them, because a lot of people do. Here are two big things, major things that people use in order to manipulate you. They use the word God. Oh, God wants me to do this for you, baby. God wants us together. God, you know, they use the word God and they use the word love. Those are the two words that can get people to do exactly what they want them to do. And narcissists, unfortunately, they understand that. They know that all I have to do is use, I actually think sometimes, you know, back when I was younger, when I had low self-esteem, I think like, man, am I an ex-narcissist? Because I, I, I understood this. I comprehended that there are certain things that I need to do in order to get you to sleep with me or to get you to fall in love with me. And, and it's like, it's, it's, it's smooth sailing after that. So I think about, when people are being manipulated and they've been used by these two words, it's really interesting. And it's really easy to spot, you know, like I said, if they're not running a certain play, they have to be doing a certain thing. David, my ex-wife after eight years left me for another man. She still talks to me at least twice a month, telling me she is unhappy with them. How long after breakup is considered a rebound? We were together for a year and a half. All right. So what she's doing is she's for sure breadcrumbing you, you know, with the intention on monkey branching back to you. What I would do to put the pressure on is to say, you know, if you're, if, if you're with that dude, if you're with that guy, don't message me anymore. Right. Don't message me anymore. We're done. I'm not going to be somebody that's your emotional outlet to tell me about what's going on in your relationship. Now, I'm not interested in that. I'm, I'm, we're not friends on that level. Uh, I'm doing my, I'm doing me. You need to completely do you. Um. Yeah. yeah, you can be in a rebound relationship for a long time. I told you, up to two years, they can be in a rebound relationship and it's completely unhappy. But I'm gonna ask you though. I'm gonna look you dead in the eyes. All right, all right, Mr. David. Why do you want her back? All right. What is it about her that wants you back? Now I'm not gonna lie, when Women leave relationships when they, when they, especially marriages, when a woman leaves a marriage for another man and they come back. I read a statistic that said, you know, those relationships usually work out 70 something percent of the time because they realize that this person that I had was a great catch. You know, <laughs> I actually released a video on TikTok that talked about this that said, um, if somebody wants to leave your life for somebody else, you say, good luck. Don't let the doorknob hit you on the way back in. Because I realize my worth. I understand what I have to bring to the relationship and to the table. And if you want to leave me for somebody else, you're going to quickly realize that it is not sweet out there. There is a relationship coach right now that's making a lot of money. That's making a lot of uh, followings happen. And <laughs> he gets it. Like he understands, he understands women. He understands men. He understands relationships. He understands the dynamics of relationships. And one of the things that he realized is that as time goes on and as people get out into the dating world and they feel 
like they can find better than you, they're going to rapidly realize that due to social media, due to dating apps, and due to the nature of dating these days, it is not sweet out there. That you are not going to find quality potential spouses out there in the dating world these days. So they just sit back and wait like, hmm, all right. We'll see how that works out for you. You know, people out here that, yeah, people out here turning down proposals, breaking up with guys, breaking up marriages, for what? Rebound relationships for the 80-20. If you guys aren't, aren't, aren't familiar with the 80-20 rule, you know, it's the notion that there are certain people that leaves an 80% person for the 20% fantasy, the illusion, what they feel like, oh my God, this is what I've been missing, what I've been wanting my whole entire life. But then once they get with that 20% and they start to realize like, hmm, this guy ain't got a lot to bring to the table. Sure, he looked great in the beginning, but in the end, this isn't that awesome. Mm. And they start longing for the 80% again. The person that cared about them. The person that bought them flowers when they were feeling down. The person that was rubbing their feet when their feet was hurting. And their back when their back was hurting, you know? They start to long for that again. They start to wonder like, wow, did I make the wrong decision? Yeah, probably. So to talk about the title of the video tonight. Rebound relationships fail. And this is the reason why. Because most people get caught up in their feelings and in their emotions in that moment. And they don't realize that the relationships that last 30, 20, 40 years down the line, they went through some things. They fell out of love with that person. They may not have even liked that person. They may have went to go live with their mom for a year. But they understood that love is a fairy tale. A partnership, a long-term partnership is what's real. You may fall in and out of love with a person over the course of 30 years. I was talking to my friend about this and i say you know what's funny you don't think that people who are in you know 30 40 and they, they till death do us part you don't think they fell out of love with each other you don't think that the man might have lost his job throughout that time or he might have got depressed or she might have got depressed or he might have went out stepped outside of the relationship you don't think that happened yeah probably happened all the time but they understood that this isn't just about what's happening right now. There's a book, The Love Dare, literally, I got the book up there. The Love Dare that talks about this. In The Love Dare, it's a 40-day deal where, you know, you read biblical scriptures, you do things where you just completely don't um, put any pressure on the other partner, all right? You just do you know, kind gestures, polite gestures all throughout the 40 days. It's a love dare, all right? And at the end of the 40 days, if you feel like you've been taken advantage of, you're not happy in this situation, you can just take off. But in the love dare, it talked about a, a, a man who felt like he wasn't happy in the relationship. He didn't want it anymore. He stepped outside of the marriage. He you know, and, and it may have been just like flirting with another, with a secretary or something like that. But it was enough to make him feel like, oh, this person that I'm with right now isn't the person that I want to be with. But at the end of the book, you know, the, the table started to turn. She did the right things. She navigated the right way in order to get him to understand that this marriage, this, this, these vows that we took together, this agreement is much more stronger than what I felt about Susan 
the the accountant or the secretary. You know? Catching up. I miss her more now than anyone I've ever missed. Yeah, it's you're going to have that. So listen, you don't attach very easily, David. In your life, there's going to be one person, maybe two, every decade that really does it for you, that you feel like is your soulmate, that sits right here, that is very heavy on your heart. But somebody joked on my on my channel, commented and said, "Well, looks like I'm looks like I'm waiting another decade." It doesn't happen very easy. Attachment doesn't happen very easy, which is why when you have all these dating apps, people, you know, the hinges, the the bumbles, the tenders, you don't fall in love with those people. You don't really engage and connect and, and, and attach to those people like you attach to the person that you were just with. So I get it. Trevor, just take some time to yourself. Imagine how you feel, how you will feel. Actually, I'm catching up. Sorry. Hey, if you guys want to give me some super chat money, I appreciate that. I'm trying to catch up. It makes it a little easier when I see super chats come up. I'm trying to catch up. Keep up with you guys. How long after a breakup is cons considered a rebound? We were together for a year and a half. Um... My golden rule is for every year that you were in a serious relationship, now I, I think I talked about this already before, it's going to take two to three months for you to get over that person. Otherwise, it's a rebound. Now, there may be other coaches that, that, that go against that, that say, honestly, somebody even went to the extreme of saying, if you're not with the first person that you've ever been with, your first girlfriend, your first boyfriend, then you're in a rebound. Put a one in the chat. If you feel like that that's true and that's accurate, for every person that you were with after your very first love or your first girlfriend or boyfriend, if you feel like that's a, a rebound relationship, put a one in the chat. I don't, I don't see that as the case because I feel... As if when you're going into this world of dating, you uh, you need to get practice. You need to understand that not everybody is meant for you, all right? A lot of people are just meant to be there in that season of your life to help teach you something about yourself. Now, many of you people wouldn't even be on my YouTube channel if you didn't want to learn about YouTube, about um. <clears throat> No, YouTube. If you didn't want to learn about uh, attachment styles, right? There it is. If you didn't want to learn about attachment styles, because I'm pretty sure that, you know, once you learned about it, you had this light bulb go off in your head like, boo, like, wait a minute. is Was I dealing with this type of person the whole time? Yeah. And then you think about your history. You think about your childhood. It's been six months. All right. I'm trying to get to the super chat. It's been six months since the breakup, and I'm still struggling. We were together for a year and a half. She's avoiding not making this. David, so listen. From everything that I've learned about breakups and healing, it takes men so much longer to get over a breakup than it does for women. Now, there are some exceptions to the rule. I work with a lot of women that are six months out that are struggling to get over breakups. But for men, we really attach. And honestly, we're lazy. When we attach, we get lazy because we and we get complacent. Now, you can you can correct me if I'm wrong here. But we get complacent. Once we have that person that we love and we cherish, we kind of feel like we don't have to do anything else. We we feel like they're family and that they'll always be there. But it's not that way for women. I, I hate to un so if you got if you guys agree with me, put a one in the chat. It's not that way for women. Women don't feel like your family forever. There is always going to be some type of conditions on their relationship. 
You have to consistently make them feel heard, understood, cherished, and loved. Otherwise, if you start to get into that, we're just brother, sister, you know, we love each other forever. They're going to lose attraction for you, especially if you don't do the things that you need to do to keep them attracted to you. And when you get into that complacency zone, in my first book, I talked about that. Proof of Seeds. On Amazon, I talk about that. Once you get into the land of the illities, illities meaning responsibility, reliability, dependability. Once you get in the land of the illities, you get, you get boring, right? And you become unattractive to them. So you have to make sure that you continue to keep that that spark, that attraction alive. I think it depends. All right, Claudette, thank you for commenting. I think it depends if you allow time to heal yourself within months after, not just jumping right into the dating scene quickly. So some people can jump into the dating scene quickly and not take it too seriously and understand that, hey, I'm just getting out here. I'm shooting jump shots in the gym. I'm not really, you know, I'm not trying to, you know, play a real pickup game. You know, it's funny when I used to, when I got back into the gym, you know, I used to sit around and just shoot like practice shots. And then somebody would come up to me and say, Hey man, you want to run twos? And I didn't have a lot of confidence yet. I was like, nah, I'm just, I'm just shooting around, man. I'm just trying to just get my stroke back. And it's the same way in the dating world. You know, you got people that get out there, get back on the date naps and they're just kind of just, you know, I'm just, you know, it hurts people's hearts because if you're on the date naps, uh, I would assume that you really want to have some type of serious relationship, but not everybody like that. Get back in the gym, just shoot around, just kind of like toy around. And then you're like, all right, I think I got this thing figured out. I think I'm ready to get back to the dating scene and, you know, find the next person. But not everybody like that. Does a DA lean fearful of voiding before becoming secure? That's a hard one to answer. Everybody's different. Everybody's different. Uh, I would have to know a little bit more about the, the situation, about the nuances of the relationship before I can answer that one. But I feel as if the anxious attacher, after they've gotten their heart broke, they can lean more fearful than the dismissive. A dismiss or just they'll just dismiss, you know. Why so many people with narcissistic traits? Seems like they are running rampant. So, you know, this narcissist word has been used very loosely. And if you look into the, the to the realm of YouTube, there are so many people who have narcissist channels that are, you know, getting a lot of subscribers, getting a lot of super chat money that are talking about narcissist and it's it's not it's not very common that a person is a bona fide narcissist narcissist you know it's only about five to ten percent of the people not even ten percent that are bona fide narcissists we all have narcissistic traits you know if we didn't have narcissistic traits we wouldn't be able to compete in the workforce because if you think about you know your your your, your performers to nfl players your your uh, NBA players, they have to have some degree of narcissism in order to compete with the next person. Like, nope, I'm better than him. I'm so like I don't I don't really I'm not really concerned about them. So it um it takes a, a degree of narcissism in order to be able to compete. If you guys are coming in here, if you're not a subscriber, please subscribe to the channel. Like you know, share the feed. This is one thing that you can do to give back to the channel, to give back to me, to let YouTube know that, hey, Coach Court, I say it all the time, kind of knows what he's talking about. Anxious avoidance is a very popular style for relationships. Yes, it's um, anxious and avoiding people make up about 50 something percent, 51, 52 percent of your typical relationship style, which is crazy, right? I, that's why I tell people opposites attract, but they rarely last. You know the old saying, opposites attract, but they rarely last. Unless one person is willing 
to heal their style, to change it up, it won't be a long-term relationship. I think the anxious is easy to submit and the avoiding looks and takes advantage of their submissive nature. I don't think it's it's actually like a conscious thing that they do. I think it's done subconsciously. I don't think they purposely try to take advantage of somebody else. Because let's not forget, the avoiding person is usually somebody who had to fend for themselves. They didn't have a whole lot of trust for people. And they have really high walls and high defense mechanisms. So when a person, like an anxious person, is able to get in there and allow for them to trust them and to help bring those walls down, that's when they're able to be like, all right, I guess I'll let this person into my life and let them help me out. They're not doing it on purpose. They're not saying like, oh, I'm just going to put my walls up and say, I'm not going to trust anybody until this person comes along and X, Y, Z, because that's usually not the case. It's usually where an anxious person just won't take a, take no for an answer. And because we have that abandonment wound in us, we have that nurturing uh, essence about ourselves. We want to make sure that that person is um, feeling comfortable, feeling at home and feeling like, hey, it's OK to let your walls down to trust me. You know, we're nurturers, we're empaths. If anything, we're beyond empaths because we don't have a whole lot of self-esteem, self-esteem about ourselves, right? Thought my love was narcissist until I learned to this girl. I feel all right. Let me check this up. Sorry, I'm reading this wrong. Yes, I think that way. You remember I was anxious, preoccupied last year. And after talking to this girl, I feel like I am an F.A. now. I said that, you know, anxious, preoccupied, run the risk of becoming fearful avoidance because we don't we don't trust people after a while, especially when she is an anxious, preoccupied. See? Yep. It took me three to four years to heal from my 17 year marriage. Let's, let's do the math. For you. Five, 35, yeah, two to three months. And sometimes it doesn't work. And it's, if you are somebody who is passively trying to heal yourself and you're not going to therapy, you're not going to counseling. This is why I think people that say, I'm not getting into a relationship because I want to heal my attachment styles. It's like, if you don't practice it, how do you know you're even healing? You're just avoiding. You're not putting yourself in like I said earlier, you're not even shooting in a gym and you say, oh, I'm just I'm just going to heal my attachment style. Like you can't passively heal your attachment style. You don't know. This is why when so many people um, get back into relationships, they end up making the same exact mistakes because they didn't do any they didn't do any work. Like. Did you how do you know you healed yourself if you. You haven't even been in the gym. If you haven't even been in the arena to know if you've healed yourself, you know, so I get it. If you've had your heart broken, you know, you're devastated and you're somebody that's an anxious attacher and you go out and you're like, you know, you just mess around with a bunch of different people because you're trying to get over it. I get it. Like that's when you need to take space for yourself, need to heal yourself. But if you're somebody who is, completely avoiding all type of intimacy communication with the opposite sex any even getting out there and you know putting yourself back in the arena you're going to end up for disappointment because here's the thing like you get caught up in thinking that you've healed yourself it's like this illusion this false sense of security like oh yeah i'm not worried about it like i don't need a man whatever you you avoid it and then you get into some type of situation ship and all of a sudden these little triggers start to happen. Like, oh, he didn't, he didn't text me back last night. That's weird. It's because you, you've set yourself up to think that you, uh, you've actually healed when all you've done was you've avoided. And I'm a firm believer that time doesn't heal all. It doesn't. It helps you repress, but it doesn't heal. So if you're not actually doing the work, which is seeing a therapist or a counselor, you know, I got a question here. 
I want to be able to set it up where I can have you guys call in and I can talk to you guys. I feel like that would be a much better way to um, engage with you guys, get some better feedback. What do you guys think about that? Put a one in the chat if you think that that would be a good idea to have you guys actually call in. I won't show your face. Just have a, just a call. And you talk to me about your situation. And I feel like that would be a much better way to um, engage with you guys and to you know provide content. Let me know. Because most of the time I feel like I'm talking to myself and I'll get that set up. All right. Over the next over the next week or two, I'm going to be able to set that up and make sure that can't keep it brief. Well, shoot. If you look at the chat, most people can't keep it brief in the chat. But I feel like it's it's better time spent if you guys can call in and I can talk to you guys. Bono e mono, kind of like I do on my one-on-one -on -one coaching calls. If you guys are interested, you know, go to my website, www.proofofseeds with z at the end.com, and check that out. You know, mono e mono, and you know, it'll help other people out that that have the same exact questions, but need to um put a lot of things in the chat. Currently healing from my healing my style after a failed dating situation with the da this has been one of the hardest things i had yeah lionel i know bro i know man it just rips your heart out you know working with life coach and a therapist healing my trauma it's 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 the worst it's um it's it's a pain that i will never wish upon any of you know my worst enemies because it doesn't go away. It's just, it's constant. And when you know that they're, we're going to go back to the topic. When you know that they're in a rebound relationship, you know, you may seek out all this information about, all right, how long will this rebound relationship last? You know, and, it, and it's, sometimes it doesn't work out. Sometimes they end up marrying their rebound partner and, and going, you know, the distance. But since most marriages end with a 51%, great you know you may find somebody else before that that marriage ends and then you don't want them anymore but i get it it's a it's a kick to the gut you know one thing that women don't understand about men is because we have these little jewels down there you guys don't understand that even if you graze one of those zoos those just jewels you kick one of those Jews, if you just kind of just nudge one of those Jews, it is the most painful thing in the world. And usually it happens where uh, it's like a delayed response. Like you'll get hit in one of them and you're like, doo -doo -doo -doo. it's like it, it comes up to your your abdomen. It is a it sucks. So when you're dealing with something like this. A relationship that that went sour and you felt like you were going to be with that person forever, it is a delayed response and it consistently, and that's the thing about when you get kicked in with those Jews, it just keeps going and it just keeps going. And you're like, mm. you try to walk it off. Men, we struggle for months and months and months on end, but for women, as a general rule, you guys have already had your mind made up about that kick that you're about to deliver. You've already had that. It's so when you say it, it's like, yep, well, I've already checked out of this thing. I've had a counselor tell me, you know, she she asked me straight up. She said, Hey, so just before we even get started, uh, are your bags packed? Like, what do you mean? Bags packed. Are your bags at the door? Like, not mine. Mm, her, yeah, maybe. But once the bags are packed and they're at the door, there's not much you can say. There's not much you can do. 
that's going to change that. Super chat. Thanks for the super chat, Chris. After one and a half years, my ex rebounded. I've been, it's been three months. How likely are avoiding exes, both DA and FA, to reach out? What effect do they have on a rebound? Um, honestly, for DAs, because of their stubbornness, they typically don't reach out. For FAs, because of their fear, they typically don't reach out. They fear that you're going to reject them, fearful of wanting. They fear that you're going to reject them or that you're mad at them or that you have some type of ill feelings towards them. So they don't reach out. But the dismissive is just more like, well, this thing's done. I don't, this is what it is. So um, this is why I always say that if you want to re-engage with a dismissive, you probably have to do the re-engaging. You have to make them feel safe and secure and comfortable again uh, in that relationship. What effect do they have on a, on a rebound? Honestly, um, for those two attachment styles, uh, it helps them heal from the relationship easier. Um, it kind of helps them alleviate that feeling of loneliness and fulfill that need for companionship. Now, this is just a general rule. Like This isn't 100% law, but from what I've seen, this is how it works out. Doing that now, Trevor, getting back in the gym and graduating my BA this upcoming. Hey, congratulations, Claudette. Currently working on myself. You have to do what you have to do. And <clears throat> what did I say? I said on my Instagram today. Literally today, I talked about that. All right, you're either, you either grow and thrive or wither and die. Are you running to the grave or away from it? Either way, that run will be alone. Exactly what you just said. Either way, that run will be alone. You know, you, you've come into this world alone. You're going to die alone. So what you do in between birth and death is going to be solely on you. There will be no here lies court coach court and somebody else there's going there's not going to be any bunk bed graves there's going to be one person in between everything that you've ever done and then you what legacy are you going to believe you're going to leave behind you know what is it that you can Leave that's going to make your kids look at you and say, I'm very proud of the person that my dad was or that my mom was. And it's all about you. I'm trying to catch up. Lionel, appreciate the super chat money, brother. Yes, I think hearing the voice of the people asking the questions will feel more real and personal. Do it. All right. All right. All right. All right. That was a, a delayed response like the dude on TikTok. That was a delayed response, but appreciate you uh, commenting and contributing to the channel. Does the fact that an anxious attachment dumper is affectionate show that they haven't moved on? Yeah. Emil. Yeah. Come on. Come on. Man, you've been following me for a while. You are a subscriber. You're a member of the channel. I feel like you should be figuring this out, Emil, because you, you know, we've talked. I feel like you, you, you understand my coaching pretty well. Even if they said many times that they do not want a relationship back. We already know the nuances in your situation. We know, and I've, I've told you what you had to do in order to flip this thing around. All right. So let's do it, Emil. Come on, brother. Yes, I agree to Lindsay. Any more questions? I'm going to wrap it up. <clears throat> yeah, Emil, you know, 
you know what you got to do. You just got to trust me. You just got to trust me. I could tell you so many times. Somebody told me when I was going through it, this man, which is a great coach, absolutely phenomenal coach, he looked me in the eyes and he got frustrated. And he said, how much coaching is enough coaching? When are you going to say, all right, I've had enough. I, I get it. I understand. I comprehend. I don't need you anymore. How much coaching is enough coaching? You have to be able to do it. This is why when people, this is, or like, um, when people are health coaches and fitness coaches, they understand that they're going to keep their job for a very long time because what they tell people to do, don't eat this, do this, do these amount of sets, do this. They're not going to do it. They understand that. So they'll keep their job like they their job security is going to happen for a very long time. And it's almost the same way with life and relationship coaching. When we tell you to do something, you have to trust us. You know, we've been there. We've done that. We've bought the T-shirt, worn it. It's in the basement somewhere collecting storage because we hated it. Like we understand, we get it. So how much coaching is enough coaching? And if you guys aren't part of my Patreon accounts, I haven't even uploaded on any, anything on Patreon. I feel like you guys are a little bit timid to join my Patreon account. It's $25 a month. You will get 20 minutes of coaching with me every single month. But it is the best value outside of my Regular coaching, literally, you're literally getting 70% off of coaching. 70% off. And that's, I, you can't beat that with a stick, you know? So if you guys are interested in that, join my Patreon. It is in the link in the description below. And talk to me one-on-one. -on -one. We talk just like this. Like, this is this is Coach Court. Anybody, you guys that are in here and you know about my coaching style, this I'm not gonna I'm not gonna hold any punches with you. I'm just gonna tell you straight up. I'm not gonna lie to you. I'm not gonna uh, make you feel good about yourself. I'm gonna I'm gonna cut to the chase. This is how I do. Super chat, David. Appreciate you, man. My ex of one and a half years was previously married to another woman. In a two-year relationship with another woman after that. I'm the first man that she was with for one and a half years. She's now looking for a new man. Okay, so what? how old are you guys? I guess I would want to know. Um, what I know about women, um, listen, my background was I mentored at-risk youth for 14 years and one thing i know i learned about girls and young women they're very confused honestly it's starting to it's starting to be diverse now there a lot of young people are confused about what they want to be who they want to be with so um this could be the case here i don't know but that is a heavy question. <laughs> I'm gonna be honest. That is a that's a twenty dollar super chat question right there. Where does she want to be? She could still be confused. So, yeah, and, and a lot of like I said, a lot of people that I work with, a lot of young youth that I work with, they were confused. They didn't know what they want to be, who they want to be with, especially if they didn't have any healthy adult figures to show them and, and, and illustrate to them what healthy relationships look like. And well, I guess 
I guess one thing you can give yourself credit for was you showed her what being with a man was like, and she might have liked it. But you know, once a person has a certain palate for uh, develop a certain taste for a certain palate, or if you want to say it that way, then you you might you might want to give yourself a pat on the back, you know. We need to talk a little bit more. This is that's an interesting one. I guess I like to know a little bit more of the nuances in a relationship. Any more questions? Yeah, I appreciate the super chat money today. I appreciate everybody showing up. Um, I know you guys have other places you can be on this Wednesday night. And I just um I'm humbled you decided to be here with me. And rocking with Coach Court. I need to get some background music. Wouldn't it be cool to have some like music? There's, there's a bunch of different things I need to do. I need to, you know, level this channel up. Now, when I first was able to go live, I was I was super geeked. And I think I might have had like a thousand subscribers. And I'm like, wow, I can go live now. And I think my first live session was very grainy. Looked like I was shooting it with a potato. And it was it was pretty bad. I feel like I upgraded a little bit since then, but you know, 6K late, 5K later. She may want to see what else is out there. See, Lionel, Fobo, fear of a better offer. Now, if you've done everything right, it's just like I talked about earlier. You know, don't let the doorknob get you, hit you on your way back in, you know. My ex-girlfriend jumped into a rebound relationship within a week of calling off our 11-month relationship with a guy who was orbiting. You got to watch out for those orbiters. Those are, they're always going to have orbiters. And now she seems that I, I've moved on, left her alone, and it's strange. Keep, keep, Yeah, keep that up. Let her continue to believe that you've moved on. Let her keep believing it. And that works in your favor. I'm beyond confused. I care for her a lot and her kids, but I can't even fathom why she would call it off and then be mad at me. You know, one thing I learned about people who call off relationships and get mad at the other person, it's because they need to justify why they left. They can't take accountability for the things that they did. So they have to make you the victim, you, you, the, you the bad guy, and you feel bad about them leaving look look it's got nothing to do with you all right it's got nothing to, how people treat you is a direct reflection on how they feel inside it is a direct direct reflection on what they have going in within themselves it has nothing to do with you you could have been the best boyfriend ever you you, you took care of her kids you, you loved her kids i would imagine it's all her. So now she's got to justify why she's being that person to make herself sleep better at night. It's nothing to do with you. All right. My ex is rebound. Like I said, super chat. If you if you, if I can't keep up with you, throw me some so I can read because I'm missing a lot. It's going pretty fast. 33 people. I was almost up to 40 people. That's pretty dope. Appreciate you. I love the kids like my own. And that's the worst. <sighs> there are a lot of channels out here that talks about why it's a bad idea to date people with kids because and i and, and people get upset about it but i understand you love those kids like they're your own and when it ends you're not just getting your heart broken by just her your heart is being broken by the kids too and because you build a bond with them you build a connection with them you know, you took it serious. Like, all right, 
if I'm going to love you, I'm going to love your kids too. But then once that ends, it's like, wow, it's a heavy weight. And you're, your heart's not broken down the middle. It's broken in like thirds and fourths and fifths, you know, depending on how many kids they have. So that takes even, that takes a longer time to heal from. And then if you were a good person, your heart breaks even more for the kid because you understand that not everybody's going to come into that person's life and love you, love those kids as much as you did. Jesse. Hey, Coach Court, how do I decide if my DAX is worth having in my life or cutting them off completely? I say you always have to initiate a certain amount of no contact. You know, in between, you have to initiate a certain amount of no contact to understand, you know, where you're at, to gauge your feelings, to gauge your emotions, um, before you decide to, you know, proceed or pursue that person anymore. Now, I'm trying to think here, Jesse. I know your story. I'm trying to make sure that I, I can follow it properly right now. But it's a lot going on in the chat right now, if you can see. Um, let me get the super chat, though have a date set up for the Saturday. Should I still date while grieving the last girl? Last girl ain't coming back. Bridge was burnt. Yeah, you burned that bridge, brother. So I would say that you um enjoy yourself, man. Listen, um, you know the old saying, there are plenty of seats, uh, fish in the sea, but try not to do, uh, try not to compare this person that you're going on a date with, with your ex, because that's just going to turn out bad. You, you should still date, you know, while you're grieving. I know you've been out of the relationship for a while now. And, you know, like I said before, men grieve the relationship so much further down the line than women do. And they can they can find a replacement so much simpler than men. Because it's just it's just the way that the world works. You know, it's the way that dating works. Um, men, women have a lot more options than men do. Men take what we can get. Women, they take when it whatever like they, they can get they have so many different people that they can um so many different options than men do so try not to agree try not to compare this person to your last girl um enjoy yourself have fun um uh, ask the good questions ask the, the healthy questions you know like i said i have that video on my channel that talks about five questions you should always ask your first date, you know, it was, it was kind of unpopular, but I feel it's, it makes sense. Like there's, there's things you want to know, you know, you may not have to ask them all on the first date. You can spread them out over a couple of days, maybe two or three dates, but there are questions you need to know about that person because it shows you, you know, what's under the hood. Like you can, you can dress yourself up as a Ferrari all day, but if I pop the hood, and it's a Ford Focus under there. Yeah, no. You're not fooling me. You're not pulling, you're not pulling the wool over my eyes. Coach Z. Z um, says, Coach, if flip flops as you get older around 50, guys have options, women don't. I wasn't going to go there, Z. I'm not going there. The value changes as you get older because men were success objects. The more we get older, the more our value goes up and the more, you know, we are stable financially. So I get it. Trust me. You ain't telling me anything that you ain't telling me nothing new, Z. I know. But this is a purple pill channel, right? We're keeping it. We're keeping it neutral here. Glenn, they're not breadcrumbs. I've met up with her twice already within the last week and had, you know what? But she's still not over her rebound. So a conversation with Leo. And she actually loves the child of the guy she's dated. Conversations with Leo. I'm talking to you right now. You'll be all right. Just keep doing the right things. Keep courting her properly. Um, 
the fact that you have a stronger emotional pull on her than the rebound and his kid, that's a really good sign for you. Right. That means that you need to, she has an, a stronger emotional bond with you than the rebound. Keep doing the right thing. I know there's going to be coaches that says, oh, you shouldn't even be dealing with her when she's in a rebound relationship and blah, 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 blah. Whatever. The heart wants what the heart wants. If you have a strong emotional bond with her and you want to bring her back, just do the right thing. Don't mention the rebound. Don't even, the guy doesn't exist. Right, it's just you and her. Yeah, Z. All right, let me see here. SP story is that breakup was nearly four months ago, but he was one of my closest friends for seven years prior to our relationship. You recommend another period of no contact, but how long should I set? When was the last time you talked to him? Yeah, the breakup was four months ago. You know, the further you get out, it's going to make it a little bit more tough to try to get back into her commitment. Like, I'm not going to lie. She tried playing the can we be friends card when she lost a grandparent. And I was there, then felt used, told her. So I haven't once mentioned the dude that she was with. Good. That's that's good. About three weeks ago. Um, I really feel like you should be trying to get him in person. Um, trying to get him in for a meetup. You know, it's 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 been a while. And the further you you wait, like I've I've coached so many people that are that are really nervous about pushing that envelope. And trying to get the person for an in-person in meetup. But the longer you wait, the longer you're going to get them used to just living without you. So ask for to go out for a cup of coffee to meet up in person. It's really important. And literally, you can go out and look at any other YouTubers, coaches, and they'll say the same thing. You have to get them in person because the magic happens in person it doesn't happen over text message or phone call or zoom calls or facetime it happens in person i don't already not feeling it i'm from missouri so i can play the game i could put on a, a couple cowboy boots and do some line dancing out there lionel so ain't no big thing to me i'm from missouri That's funny, though. What? All right, I'm about to end this live session. It's, it's, uh, it's getting pretty late. But I appreciate you guys. Yeah, the lockdown. Mm. COVID has ruined a lot of relationships. I think we talked about this. COVID has really done a number on relationships. People talking about their second and third relationships at my age is just upsetting. I can't <laughs> even score one date. One person I was interested in has already had three relationships. Look, Bimmer, listen, listen. Relationships aren't everything. They're not what they're all cracked up to be, all right? Um, it, it takes a lot of energy. It takes a lot of time away from you. If you're not able to focus on your purpose... It's expensive. If you have a girlfriend, listen, it's expensive. I'm looking you in the eyes. It's expensive to have girlfriends. And it's a lot of time. You know, since this is a Purple Pill channel, I care, you know, it's a give and take. You know, if, if you were raised in um, a household where there was a mom and dad, like you understand the benefits of like, Napoleon Hill talks about it in Thinking Grow Rich. He talks about it in this book. 
he talks about, you know, a man who has a woman behind him, he can go to great lengths. He become very successful with having a woman who cares for him and um, is able to support him. But at the end of the day, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of maintenance. Um, especially if there's somebody who you don't really, you, you don't really jive with. It's not really a healthy dynamic. So take your time, focus on your purpose, purpose, focus on your dreams in life. And get those, once you get those accomplished women, you know, a, a coach told me a long time ago, high school football coach, relax. He said, relax, bro. Women will always be there. All right. Focus on what you need to focus on and they'll be there. Book a coaching session is worth it. <laughs> like the video. Look, Simone, I need to put you on as a moderator, you know. Cause you always, you always support. We did talk about it in our session code. Thank you. Thanks. Um, would it be possible to get your insight on the current situation? Because I've tried to find some advice. All right. I'll, I'll, I'll go ahead and answer this last one and then we'll end it. Glenn. Man, I wish I wish I was able to, to, to chop it up with you. You've been around since day one. Wow. Since this channel was just a wee baby old. So crazy. All right, conversations with Leo. We're going to wrap it up after this, all right? Okay, so my ex came back after six months when her rebound relationship failed, but she still got feelings for her rebound. Mm. That just hits me in the old feels. That makes me feel as if you were still put in backup position. You're not the starting quarterback. You know, she really has feelings for the other guy. He's the starting quarterback, but he twisted his ankle. So he's got to go down for six to eight weeks. And you're the backup quarterback. Do you really want to be a backup quarterback? I don't, I don't think. If you're not in America, the quarterbacks run the team. You know, football Americano, quarterbacks run the team. And it seems like she's put you in backup position. Which means, eh, I'm going to make sure that this other quarterback can't play before I put you in the game. It's, it's, it's a tough thing to realize. I know your ego might be bruised. But, yeah, you're going to have to cut her off. You're not the starting quarterback. If she's got stronger feelings for that other guy, which means that he can go out and play better. He can go out and get better production than you can. Yeah. Mm. You're going to have to take your talent somewhere else, all right, where you are the starting quarterback. and you are, You're out there putting up 400 passing yards a game, all right, because right now she doesn't, she doesn't feel like you can put up, you know, 200 yards passing a game. So sorry, brother. Thanks for the question, though. I think doing some calling lives are unique. I definitely have some advice for people dealing with rebounds. Rebounds suck, but they won't last. 90% says so. All right, guys. Love you. Thank you for always tuning in. Thank you for always supporting me, making me what I am today. Good night. Until next time.